Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and on this video I'm going to show you five things that you can do with Squasher, this amazing plugin that we now have in Cubase 11. Coming up. When Squasher was introduced in Cubase 11, I was over the moon. I couldn't believe that we have a plugin like this built inside Cubase 11. It's so versatile, you can do so many things, it can help you achieve so many different sounds. And today I'm going to show you just five of the things that you can do, but you can do way, way more. But let's talk about these five things that you can do with Squasher that are really amazing. The first thing that you can do is bring out and enhance the tails of your synths, the reverbs, the delays, all these things that make a synth sound spacious and bigger, you can enhance them with Squasher. Let me show you, I have this synth right here. Let's listen to it without the Squasher first. It's a EDM kind of synth, a nice big lead. Let's listen to how Squasher can transform this. And I've leveled match at this stage. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the upward compressor to bring out those amazing reverbs. Hear that? If I turn it off, it disappears. It really helps you get these super massive synth sounds that, you know, many people use with EDM music. So, let's try again. Low end as well. So if I would have this synth solo, I would probably go ahead and add also the low end band to get a bit of low end. Check it out. And of course, I'm adding the drive as well to add a little bit of saturation. See, when you open the attack, this synth becomes so punchy as well. Check it out. And see, we're still picking at minus 12. This is all perceived loudness. It's not, you know, just, okay, uh, I'm blowing it up with the volume. Check it out. You can basically make any sound massive. That's the first thing that you can do with Squasher. Let's check out the next thing that we can do. And the next thing is add perceived loudness and punch to your mixes. Now I have to tell you, it depends on the style of the music that you're creating, but if you're creating electronic music, if you're creating EDM or stuff like this, you will find that Squasher is really, really powerful. But in this case, I'm going to show you on my Synthwave single so that you can see that it can work on material that don't necessarily require so much loudness, okay? And let's listen without first, and then I'm going to introduce it. I'm overdoing this, of course, now, and let's try and level match, okay? Let's see. Paradise. 
See, even though I'm level matching, the perceived loudness is much, much bigger. So now what I can do, let's say that, okay, maybe you don't want to overdo it because you're not doing electronic music and you don't want this kind of super in your face sound. You can actually add a touch of squasher in your master bus by using the blend slider right here. So maybe if I don't want to go too far because this is a synthwave track, I don't need all this kind of super massive loudness, I can go here and just blend it in. Let's check it out. You know, so it makes your low end a little bit more compact, it adds perceived loudness, but what I would do on mixes, I would say try and have the attack a little bit open so that, you know, your transients don't get completely squashed, unless you really want to squash them because squasher, no pun intended, can do this very, very nicely, but it's a very, very interesting and powerful mastering tool as well. Now, let's move on to the third thing that you can do, and this is transform and mangle your drum loops. Let's check out this loop that I have right here, first without that squasher, and it's actually a very, very busy drum loop, and I chose it specifically for this. Let's listen to it without the squasher first. Okay, very busy. A long kick drum. Very busy hi-hats, lots of elements. Let's see how we can transform this with Squasher. First of all, you know. Now. Now what about if we start introducing the gate with the Squasher? Let's check this out. See how I'm changing the envelope of the kick drum, the low end? Check it out. Without it? So I'm completely transforming this loop just by changing the gate. And of course, I'm not only touching the gate, I'm, I can also start introducing upward and downwards compression. Let's try it out. See how many different things I can do. So I can go to town with it, I can create so many different variations of the same super busy and super difficult to edit drum loop. You can completely change the feel and the groove of your loops. And every loop you throw at it, it's going to sound different. Try and play with the internal sidechain. Send it to the gate, see what it does change the frequencies, you will be surprised, you can completely transform your loops. Let's move on to the fourth thing that you can do with Squasher, and this is make your vocals and your bass more even, make them a little bit more compact. So let's try this vocal first, I'm going to try it without the Squasher, and then I'm going to introduce the Squasher. Now, for this one, I'm using just a single band, uh, but you know this vocal by now, it's one of my favorite, Dynamic vocals, let's listen to it without the squasher. No worry, feel no pain. I feel no worry, feel no pain. Okay, it has this really loud jump in volume. Let's add the squasher and see what it can do. Pain. I feel no worry, feel no pain. I feel no worry, feel no Nothing bothers me about the dynamics of this vocal anymore, you know, it kind of brings down this peak and also, you know, for very quiet vocals, it can bring up the quiet parts when you use the upward compressor. I feel no worry, feel no pain. I feel no worry, feel no pain. 
And it goes without saying that if it brings up a little bit of noise, you can use the gate and completely remove that noise. Now, let's try this on this bass, which is an electric bass. It's not too bad, but you can see there are a lot of peaks and you know for the bass I might need to tame those attacks a little bit so for this one I'm using two bands I'm using one band for the lows you know I want to treat the low end differently and one band for the mids and the highs because we have a lot of you know string noise and all these things so let's see what we can do with it You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open a Supervision instance and I'm going to use the wave scopes so that we can visualize what Squasher does to this bass, the peaks. Let's check it out. See? See this? Let's turn on Squasher. And if I want to, I can go to my mids and turn down the attack and what I'm doing here as well is I'm using the gate to remove the noise that we have in between the silences It cleans it up really nicely. So again, without. And again, I'm keeping the same peaks when I'm using Squasher. So even out your vocals, your bass, very, very powerful. And it can be incredibly useful when you are in a tough mixing situation. Let's move on to the fifth thing that you can do with Squasher and that's use it for creative sidechain. Okay, so let's play this little track that I have here. And what I've done is I have a kick drum and I have a bus with synths and bass and I'm sidechaining this synths and bass to the kick drum. Let's listen without the squasher first. It's a little bit messy. Let's see what squasher can do for us. So what I'm doing here is I've added a side chain input for all the bands and I'm using the two kilohertz frequency for my kick drum. I'll explain why, let me show you. I'm using the kick drum as my side chain one and let's see what it does. So it creates this kind of sidechain effect. Let me explain why I've chosen this frequency. Now this kick drum is not very long, but it's not too short either. So in order to have like a more punchy sidechain, I'm using two kilohertz as my frequency. Let's listen. See what I've done here? Now we're listening just to the sidechain signal. I mean, I could easily go and do this. But see how it's longer. So this will kind of squash everything. Instead, I'm using this one that's very snappy and... Hear that? And I can tweak the release now. Now let's try the upward compressor. 
it's so see it does this amazing envelope kind of sound it goes like wok 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 because we have the downward compressor and by the time we get the release we also have the upward compressor kicking in and it does this kind of whoop, this very nice ramp into the next kick drum let's listen to it with the kick drum Now without the squasher, see no groove. Okay. No upward. Now for the fun of it, let's try and change the frequency for the side chain. Let's listen to what it does. You know, that's an interesting sound as well. I like it. This is a little bit more snappy. So as you can see, you can do so many different things with Squasher. Now, just for the fun of it, I'm going to go ahead and instead of sending my sidechain to Squasher, I'm going to set it to the gate and let's see what it does now. It's so cool, isn't it? You can completely, completely transform anything you throw at it. And with a side chain, you can do so many different things. Try side chaining your hi-hats to the squasher, okay? And just have a very fast pattern and see what you can achieve by changing the attack, the release, the gate, all those different parameters. It's such an awesome plugin. So, I hope you enjoyed this video guys and I hope that now you're inspired to try all these things with Squasher and come up with some cool, cool tracks. And if you found this video useful or entertaining, subscribe to the channel. I would really, really appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up button and please the bell notification icon. I don't know if I told you guys, but at least 65% of the people that watch my videos haven't subscribed. Share this video with whoever you think they might find it useful and... Squash away.